Hello everybody, this is Val with This Is How You Do It. I know it's been a while since, I don't know if it's really been a great while, but it's been a minute since I've come before you. Um, I was, um, couldn't sleep, couldn't sleep. Um, shoot, it's a little after five this morning, but I've been up before then. I've been looking at all the, um, Whitney Houston, Bobby Brown drama that people are talking about them, but I don't know if some of you, some of you know, or some of you don't know, y'all don't know the actual death of my mom. Whitney Houston died the day before my mom died, so it's been three years for my mom. Also, my mom died February the twelfth of two thousand twelve. Whitney Houston died February the eleventh of two thousand twelve. So. Um, it kind of um, it's a it's a reminder when there's such a public figure figure, um, being talked about when you have your tragedies also that um go unnoticed or unthought about. You have your own personal tragedies, and then I was thinking about um. Whitney Houston's daughter and the grief she must have been going through and just the constant reminder all around her of her mom you know and not really having something to keep you going you know Or somebody to pull you out of your grief. I, I just had to get up. Um, I posted some um, some stuff about some interviews about Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown uh, and the mom. You know the stuff that was said about them. The stuff that was said about the funeral. And how he said that he was it wasn't that he was not invited to the funeral. It's just that the security kept telling him his entourage couldn't sit up front with the family because they didn't recognize his kids because his other children is not a, in the public eye like that. And he had some grown kids, and they and it looked like a lot of them. And plus, his girlfriend was with him at the time, his fiance, and they just thought it was too many people. And then you know how you got so many seats. Limited it just for family at funerals and he said instead of disrespecting the whole situation because the people said it to him three times and he felt disrespected so he um kissed the casket and then tapped his son and then told them to let's go see but you know and then i saw another interview where her brother her oldest brother said they used to be when he used to be like his little tag along and they did everything together People used to call them like they was twins. They hung out so much together. But he the first person they introduced her to drugs. And everybody blamed Bobby Brown for that. Because they say when she got with him, her life went downhill. But she introduced Bobby Brown to drugs for one I'm understanding. That he said he just used to drink beer and smoke weed. And when she, when he met her, she was she was doing the, the do. You know. And she introduced him to her. He was scared of it. But once he tried it, he had an addictive personality. And there you go. But what what I'm understanding is before her death, he had been seven years sober. But um, people have their opinions and ups and downs, and doing somebody that some people can be so cruel. I'm not just saying with the rich. I'm saying with the poor, with the struggling, with the ain't, ain't the people that got and people ain't got everybody going through their own issues. And I'm just saying, when people going through something like that and you don't know the situation, you don't know these people personally, be kind and just stay out of it. Let the family deal with it. Let them grieve in their own way. Because somebody going to blame somebody anyway, even when there's nobody to blame because they hurt him. Because the way, way it happened with mine, you would think we were the Rockefellers the way all the mess that went on at the funeral. And after the funeral, and before the uh before the funeral. So, 
all this is just bringing that back up and i was i was thinking about the anniversary of, her, of my mom's death you know she died two days before valentine's and one day after whitney houston's death so all that stuff is uh like put the light on that situation before and after Yep, it'll be three years. Three years is not a really long time, y'all. It really isn't. The memories are still there. Her clothes are still in, in the house. Uh, some of her things are still here. I haven't, I haven't thrown anything out that she had when she was living with me. Or things that I bought her when she was living with me. I still got it. So... I didn't bring anything from her house. This is just stuff that I bought her since she was staying with me. I just got bought her. But still, all that stuff is still here. Constant reminder. Great big photo of her in the hallway. Giant size. And I can imagine that girl, everywhere she looked, was a constant reminder. Couldn't even go to the bathroom without thinking about it. People don't understand. Mm -hmm. And you'll never understand unless it happened to you. I'm I had a two two strand twist, y'all. Um plaited at the root natural like plait at the root to kind of hold that tight and then two strand twist the west of it and i'm taking it down it's got conditioner and oil on my hair conditioner first and then a little oil on my hands and rub rub each one of these things and twist it up i just thought i'd talk to y'all about that because i don't know why are people are so ignorant You know, folks alone. That's when you stop talking to people. You stop answering the phone. You just lay. You just don't want to hear the phone ring no more because people calling constantly. Phone just ringing back to back, and every time the phone rings, it's somebody being stupid. You just don't. You stop answering the phone. You stop talking to people. You just lay down and and try to grieve. With them people being in the light like that, it's awful. And I said, since I'm up and awake, I'm going to go ahead and take my hair down. And I tell y'all about tell y'all about my hair and what I did to it. Now I'm just showing it. I'm showing it to you, showing me, showing the takedown of it all. See, I have three plaits on this side, three plaits, plaits, then twists on this side, and then three, three in the back going down like that. That's the way it was. Total, but twelve. Four rows of threes. <laughs> oh, goodness. I got my coffee this morning, y'all. I don't even know what to call this video, what to even name it, because of what I talk about. Mm.
that's it. This is what I do to my hair, y'all, when I do a twist out. This is all I do. And now the hair is done. That's why I was telling y'all um, that a little oil, well, a little conditioner on your hand, rub it on your hair. I may show you me doing a couple of plaits, maybe tonight or tomorrow. Little conditioner, little oil, and this is what I came up with. Straight out the container, not, not a mix, not none mixed together. Just straight conditioner on my hand, rub it through my hair, then straight oil on my hands, rub it through my hair, and this is my look. I don't know if I got any cards back here. Try to cover that up. If I do. This the other side. And that's that. You know how they say give people time to grieve? I don't think it ever goes away. Ever. Never. Never. Never goes away. I don't think so. Like I say, three years seemed like a long time. But then it also seemed like it was just yesterday. And all the important things in your life, you, it's, it's life still goes on. Life still goes on. Just like the people never was on the planet. Ain't no all oh, get over it all. Uh, it's time to start moving on and everybody grieve at their own pace and their own time. And some people don't make it back as you can see from that. They die of a broken heart. And this is valid, this is how you do it. I don't know if this is just a twist out video or a Telling the people I have a, a little calm and courtesy. And I talk to all of you guys on the next video. Bye bye now. Try and stop it, y'all. Mm -hmm. Bye bye now.